Hi there, this is Roma Waterman and you're listening to Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. I'm believing this podcast will help you to understand and flow in the power of Holy Spirit-led worship in your church and in your private worship time. In this podcast, you're going to get a big dose of theological foundations, personal stories and practical applications that you can implement straight away to activate the power of prophetic worship that will bring healing, breakthrough and deliverance in your communities and your personal life. I hope as you listen, you'll also feel inspired and empowered. This is Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. Hey, my friends, welcome back to the podcast. Today, we're talking about four different expressions of the prophetic song. Now, there's probably a limitless amount of different expressions that you can use as you sing prophetically. But I wanted to share today four of the most common when I study the scriptures. These are the ones that I notice and also what I'm observing when I see what's happening in churches currently. And so I wanted to share on these because they're the most common. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share on the four prophetic songs. I'll expand on what they look like, what they sound like. And then I'm also going to give you an example of what that might sound like if you sang it out spontaneously. I don't know what I'm going to sing yet. Let's hope it sounds okay. (laughs) But I'm just going to do it on the fly and uh, give you examples because I figure that we learn best by hearing and seeing examples, not just listening to lots of information. So I hope that this gives you lots of ideas to do this in your own worship teams and also just privately at home. So let's talk about the four expressions of the prophetic song. Number one is the song of thanksgiving. Number two is the song of breakthrough. Number three is the song of prophetic declaration. And number four is the song of love. So that's thanksgiving, breakthrough, prophetic declaration and love. Let's get started. Let's start with the song of thanksgiving. Now, if you have been in worship team for a long time, you will know this scripture. Psalm 95 verse 2, let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. In this scripture, we're admonished, aren't we? We're saying, enter into God's presence with thanks and with praise. And I really do believe this, that praise is like the key. It's the entry point into his presence. And to release that in song is a great way to release the sound of heaven in a corporate setting and at home. The Lord loves it when we praise him, doesn't he? And I love it. I love hearing the song of praise that that comes out of our teams and our congregations, the song of thanksgiving. If you long to experience more of God's presence in your life and in your worship times, praise and thanksgiving is key. It just creates the right setting and one that's obviously fitting for the King of Kings, isn't it? So the reason why this type of prophetic song is powerful is because it really does open doors. Psalm 104 says this, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. When I think of that scripture, I imagine that my praise is like a key that is opening up the door of heaven. And I love how the message translation says that scripture in Psalm 100 and verse four, it says, enter with the password. Thank you. Make yourselves at home talking praise thank him and worship him. So that prayer of thanksgiving is so powerful. What are the characteristics of that kind of song? Well, number one, it expresses who God is. Number two, it reveals to us and reminds us how blessed we are. You know what? We know that in our heads, but we often need a daily revelation of how good God is because There's so much evil and darkness in the world, isn't there? And we can sometimes focus on the wrong things. So when we sing that that song of thanksgiving, we remind ourselves of how blessed we are and how good God is. And then number three, characteristic of a thankful song, it's full of praise. That's how you can tell. So let me sing an example of what a thankful song might sound like to give you an example. So it might be, it might be something like this. Let me just try something. Lord, I am overwhelmed by your goodness. 
It is you who satisfies. I am blessed and I am grateful for your power in my life. So we honor you today, Lord. We give you all the praise and we say that we will worship you for all of our days. Oh Lord, we are thankful. Oh Lord, we are thankful. Oh Lord, we are thankful. And we honor you today. So that's an example of a song of thanksgiving. Let's go to the second one, the song of breakthrough. This is one of my personal favorites. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary describes the word breakthrough as this. Number one, it says an offensive thrust that penetrates and carries beyond a defensive line in warfare. Or number two, an act or instance of breaking through an obstacle. So a breakthrough anointing, when we sing that song of breakthrough, it cuts through spiritual strongholds, doesn't it? To bring freedom and release and breakthrough words carry power to relinquish that which has come to destroy. And that's what we want. This song of breakthrough, it slices the atmosphere of oppression and brings peace, rest, and clarity. And we see this in the scriptures. Here's one example. It's when um, King Saul is oppressed by an evil spirit and he calls for the young David to come and play over him. In 1 Samuel 16, verse 23, he says, whenever the spirit from God came upon Saul, David would take his harp and play. And then relief would come to Saul, he would feel better, and the evil spirit would leave him. That's what happens, and that's what can happen when we sing a song of breakthrough. It carries a sound that shifts the spiritual authority from darkness and turns it over to the light. Amen. And this song of breakthrough, look, it doesn't even necessarily need to be about a specific situation. It just simply carries breakthrough because you're singing of themes that are greater and more powerful than what we're currently being faced with. And that's what a song of breakthrough is. It goes higher than the circumstance and sings above it. And one thing I love about when this song of breakthrough can happen in a corporate worship setting is that there is breakthrough that is immediate. There's a sudden shift as you sing into the situation that is happening now and things just change in a moment because that kind of song carries healing and many people can receive spiritual and physical healing just as the song is being sung just like King Saul did. So some of the characteristics of a breakthrough song, number one, it breaks through obstacles. Number two, it carries themes that bring release, but does not always speak into a specific situation. And number three, it is immediate. So let me give you an example right now of what a prophetic breakthrough song might sound like. All right. Thank you, Lord, for your song of breakthrough right now over the people that are listening to this podcast today. Oh, Lord, I know you're on the rise. You are shattering the strongholds. You are bringing in release. You are our freedom. Oh, Lord, you are our God, the one who conquers armies. There is nothing in this earth that can ever conquer you. You are the great conqueror. You are the mighty king. You are the one who rules. You bring breakthrough in everything. So Father, we say, bring your hand today. Release your power and your presence. You're always making a way. Number three, the song of prophetic declaration. Now, at first glance, the song of breakthrough and the song of prophetic declaration, they can look the same, but they're slightly different. Let me explain them to you. So they seem similar because they both carry a theme of warfare on them. And to sing both of these expressions means you need to be a fighter, right? You need to be a worship warrior and you need to stand up and against what is trying to oppress or possess 
but prophetic declaration speaks directly into a specific situation, whereas the song of breakthrough can carry many themes that can bring a release without necessarily speaking into a particular situation. So with the song of prophetic declaration, you may also be singing of something that's not yet happened as well. So this builds faith in those that hear it. And although there might be the sense of an immediate change in the spiritual atmosphere, it also might be some time before you see the outworking of it. Are there examples of this in scripture? Well, yes, there are. Let me read some of them to you. Numbers 21 verse 17. Then Israel sang this song, spring up, oh well, sing about it. Isaiah 26 verse 1, in that day, this song will be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. God makes salvation its walls and ramparts. Isaiah 54 verse 1, sing, O barren woman, you who never bore a child, burst into song and shout for joy, you who were never in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. And Revelations 5 9 is another example. And they sang a new song. You are are worthy to take the scroll and open its seals because you were slain and with your blood you purchased men for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. I'm getting excited just reading these scriptures. I can feel my spirit coming alive. So the characteristics of the song of prophetic declaration are number one, speaks directly into a specific situation. Number two, you might be singing of something that will happen in the future, yet there will still be a change in the atmosphere in the moment. Number three, it builds faith in those that hear it and encourages others to believe for what is to come. Let me try to sing an example of a prophetic declaration song right now. Lord, you are the answer for our government. You are the answer for our families. You have divine authority and you reveal the future. Come with your presence. Come with your power. Release your authority over our nation for the government is on your shoulders. The earth is in your hands. And so we trust you with all we have to come and heal our land. Amen. All right, the final example of a prophetic song is the love song. Now, this song of love expresses our heart for the Father, and it's just that. It's a love song. Isaiah 5 verse 1 says this, I will sing for the one I love, a song about his vineyard. And that's what I feel we do when we release a beautiful love song to the king. And, you know, one thing I will say about the song of love, the prophetic song of love, of love is that this is often the default position for most people who are starting out in the prophetic song. Like most people would find that this expression is the easiest to release. And this is why it's probably one of the most common forms of releasing the prophetic through worship. But I want to say to you, a couple of things about this, uh, almost not a warning, but just a something to be mindful of, even though it's the simplest form of releasing the prophetic, it's actually the most difficult to express in a corporate setting. And, and this is because it's very personal in nature. And that can actually sometimes ostracize people or disengage people because it can just really sound like you and God are having a conversation and they're just watching on. And you don't want that. You know, our Public worship times have to all be about releasing a song that engages people and helps them to enter in to the Lord's presence. There's nothing wrong with this kind of song being sung publicly. And obviously, please do this in your private worship times. I mean, it's it's vital that you do this. But the way that you do it in public needs to be quite skillful. Because if you're just singing out, you know, I love you, Jesus, I love you, Jesus, that's not really... Well, the question you could really ask yourself is, is this something that people need to hear or is this something that people need to engage with? In fact, I'll give you some points in a moment on how you can be a little bit more skilled in a public worship setting, but you want to make sure that this intimacy, this intimate time song 
that it's really engaging people and including them and that it doesn't become so personal that it's just you and the Lord and people watching. So I'm not saying don't bring your whole heart when you sing this publicly, but what I'm saying is we can use unique language to help us engage and include people so that it doesn't become a performance as people watch instead of join in. We really want people to be engaged and help them to connect with heaven for themselves. So when we express the love song of the Lord publicly, here's some ideas to help you to be really skilled in this on a platform. Number one, I'll give you four ideas. Choosing simple phrases that people can follow. And this immediately allows people to sing with you. So and you might be just saying, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. And then that's something that people can just sing along with as you repeat that. Number two, using words like we, us, and our rather than I, me, and my in a public setting. is It's very simple, but you change the phrase from I love you, for example, to we love you. And there's power in that. There's also power in everyone joining together in a agreement as a whole rather than the emphasis being on their own personal commitment to the Lord. Number three, ask people to sing their own song to the Lord. One of my favorite things is actually when the congregation just starts to sing out spontaneously. And I think we don't do this enough in our public worship settings. It's not easy, especially if you come from a church where this doesn't happen often. But I want to encourage you that just having those little moments in services, it will get, the culture will get stronger and stronger. I know when we've started doing this in services, I remember at the beginning, we didn't have this culture and people kind of didn't know what to do. And so we had to get our worship team to sing out and be really bold and really positive when we had those um, spontaneous moments, just singing sort of so that we provided an example for people of what that could look like. But you know what? After 12 months of doing this on a regular basis, the congregation just naturally, their spirits would just rise and they would naturally do it because we'd built a culture around them singing spontaneously as a whole, singing their own song. It's beautiful to do that. So asking people to sing their own song to the Lord as they feel prompted. And then number four, the love song can look different in different congregational settings. So for example, how you lead and sing in a prayer meeting or a 24-7 worship event or a healing meeting, it might be different than a Sunday church service. You might just find that you don't do it as much on a Sunday, but you might do it more in some of those more intimate meetings. It just might be more appropriate then. So accommodating the love song, depending on the structure and the theme of your service is really, important. So let's talk about those characteristics of a love song. Number one, it's very personal, heartfelt and genuine. Number two, it's not asking for anything. It's pure adoration because of who he is. And then number three, it expresses our heart for the father. So let me give you an example of how that might look if you were going to sing that in a corporate setting. I adore you, we adore you, your people love you. I adore you, we adore you, your people love you. Oh Lord, our hearts are tender before you. As we say we love you, oh Lord, we love you, we love you. Then you might turn it into something that is repetitive so people can sing. We love you, Lord. 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 It's you that we adore. It's you we're longing for. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. So they're my four ideas of four prophetic songs that you can sing. Let me go through them again just to summarize. You have the song of thankfulness, which expresses who God is, reveals to us and reminds us of how blessed we are and is full of praise. Then you have the song of breakthrough, which breaks obstacles, carries themes that bring release, but does not always speak into a specific situation and is immediate. There's breakthrough that is immediate. Then there's the song of prophetic declaration, which can speak into a specific situation 
You might be singing of something that happens in the future. There's a change in the atmosphere in the moment, but the outworking of it might happen later on, builds faith in those that hear it and encourages others. And then the characteristics of a prophetic love song, it's personal, heartfelt and genuine. It's not asking for anything. It is pure adoration because of who he is and expresses our heart for the Father. Now, finally, I promised you an activation that you can try out. So here's something that you could do with your teams and at home. Out of those four themes that I mentioned, I want you to choose one expression that stands out to you. And then over a simple chord structure, either with your worship team during rehearsal or at home, I want you to sing something out spontaneously over that. Now, don't prepare. I really want you to practice this spontaneous song. So just go, I think let's try the song of love today and then just sing something out. So don't prepare it beforehand. Let yourself just go with the flow in the moment. And then you can even practice the other three at another time or in one whole session if you're practicing it. But that activation is a lot of fun. I'd love to hear how you go with it. So let me know. And I hope that this has helped you in giving you some more of ideas on how you can release the prophetic song. Be blessed today. Thanks so much for listening to Release the Sound, a podcast on prophetic worship. If you're hungry for more, head to romawaterman.com where you can check out my book, Releasing Heaven's Song, Singing Over Your Nation for Breakthrough and Revival. It includes activations that you can use with your team or even on your own. And I've also got an online school where we have several courses on the prophetic, worship, spirituality, and creativity. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave us a review. And until then, I pray that you will release the song of heaven over your family, your church, and even your nation. And I look forward to sharing with you in the next Release the Sound Prophetic Worship Podcast.